Welcome to Relevate, where we show business owners how to get their time back with digital transformation. Word of mouth is the biggest source of new clients and income for all businesses. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Zoho Forms to help referral customers purchase your services faster. Simply put, word of mouth is awesome. It gives us authority and trustability almost instantly. But maybe just quite not enough for your big purchase offering. So having an option that can conveniently take this referral to a low barrier to entry purchase, such as a cheaper price, can help accelerate your word of mouth growth dramatically. And this can apply to anyone. Let's say you're a business to business service provider. Your main service will cost a lot of dollars and take some time to get the sale. So instead of offering a large purchase solution that solves the problem, you can offer a smaller price package to get started. For instance, a strategy session. So let's say that client goes ahead and accepts a small purchase. They're not only happy, they've had a positive experience purchasing from you. This client will now be feeling far more comfortable to purchase the larger package as not only are you a referral, but they've experienced firsthand what it's like to be a customer. So here's a way to automate offering the small package service and keep record of who's been referring to you. And so to do this, we're gonna be using Zoho Forms and I'll show you an example template form before we get into building our own so we can get a clear idea of how we can get this to work. So here is a form for a video company. And what this does is it gives a brief description of what the service is and an example videos here as well so that a client can get a clear idea of what they're purchasing. It then asks for the client's contact information. And then a really cool thing in here is that they've got a qualifying question. Since this is a uh, film production company with a physical service, it's limited to where they can physically go out and film. So for instance, if the client actually says, no, I'm not in this area, it actually refers to them to call them for custom pricing. If they clicked yes instead, it's going to take them all the way down to the payment. And so this is helping create a qualifying question and not getting into that awkward moment where someone's pays money and then all of a sudden, they have to reject the client and say no, and it just saves all that kerfuffle by having some qualifying questions in the form. Now, I've probably shown you enough and explained why enough. Let's just get into actually building this form. So first thing we're gonna do is here we are in the Zoho Forms homepage. If you build a form before, or if you're new to this, the first step is to click new form, and we're gonna just write out what this is. So this is gonna be a test form. Let's call it an example form. So now we're in here, we've got to just think, what are the first things we're going to need to know when we're getting a new client? And that's going to be their contact details. So, and so contact details, pretty standard stuff. So we go, we'll go with the name, a phone and an email. Now, after this, it's the qualifying questions. We're going to use a physical service as an example again, but even if you don't offer a physical service, you might still have qualifying questions such as employee count. Does this company have 10 plus heads? If yes, we do the service for you. If no, maybe it's a work with us model. To do a qualifying question, we simply need to pick up the checkbox here and we can turn this into a yes or no. So you can say, do you live in Brisbane, Queensland? And again, this is for a physical service. So then we can go yes or no. And then when we hit save, and so here's a quick little thing. Be careful when you put it in the description, the instructions here for this checkbox, because it puts them below the yes or no box. And if it's a question, that's not a great formatting option. So what you can actually do is you can copy or cut and paste the question into the field label. So when you do that, it now goes above. Now we've got this yes or no, let's fill out this form based on these questions that people may ask. So if the person says, do you live in Brisbane? The person goes, yes, you'd go into the, the address. So you can put in an address, that's good enough as is. And we would also want to maybe put in here some multiple choice questions. If you've got to do some, like getting some details correct, like what exactly are you trying to achieve out of this service? The form is for you to customize as much as you like. If we go back to our example, this one just had a very simple question, which again, you can do as well. So if you've got a general question, you can use the multi-line box here and say, you can put in here, what is the major problem you are looking to identify? So again, we're just getting some pre homework questions that they give to us before we get into that strategy session, if that's theoretically what this is. And now I could bore you by completely filling out this form but I don't think we all want to see that. We just want to see how this is built. So you get the idea. We can drag boxes in here and put down what we need to. Let's just move to the next step, which is 
how do we make this form change based on this yes or no question? So to do that, we've got to go to rules, and then we have to go to field rules, which is this one here. So with field rules, you can configure actions such as taking the yes or no question. So we go here, we click on this, and we go to the yes or no, which is this one here, which is do you live in Brisbane? And then we can put it as yes. And if it is showing that as yes, then we can show all the fields. So we can show like the address field, what is the major problem, and we'll leave it at that for now. So just to give you an example, we'll preview the form as it is right now. See, so the customer can put in their name, phone, email, and then they go to the yes or no. If they click yes, the address pops up here. And then if they click no, let's get into that now. So if the person has no, let's add in a description. So in this description here, I've just made a nice big bold text and it's just saying, click submit and we'll get in touch with you for custom pricing. Now, again, we can go back to the rules, field rules, add a new rule here. And then again, we go to the same multiple choice question, which was, do you live in Brisbane? And if it says no, we can then show the description tab, and hit add. And just to be clear as well, if we go back to here, this description tab, if we actually click on it, we can change this. So we can say, if answer is no. Now, the reason why we might want to do this is if you start doing a lot of qualification questions, when you go to create these field rules, you'll notice that it gets very hard to find the right fields to include because they all start looking the same. This little tab here is no longer saying description. It's got if answer is no. And that's just a nice way to keep things neat and easy to modify later on down the line if this starts becoming quite a complex form. So now we can hit save. And again, let's just quickly go through and test this form and see how it performs. So here's our new form here. If we hit yes, it comes up with the other questions. And then if we hit no, it comes up with a little message. Click submit and we'll get in touch with you for custom pricing. And so there you go. That's a really rough overview of actually how you build out the form. Now there are a few other settings that are really good to choose and click on. So let's go through them quickly. So to do this, we can go to the click the settings and we'll open up this tab here. And one of the ones I really love is this save and resume. If you enable saving, it makes the form a lot more convenient to fill out. Sometimes people may not have the answer to all the questions you have and having a save option allows them to come back when they're ready to fill it out. I also like to check this, allow respondents to save the form via email. So if they put in their email, it will then send that form to them so it's easy to access. Again, if you don't click this, it's just going to give them a link. And if they lose the link, they have to refill out the form. And that might make it just inconvenient enough for them to never go through with it in the first place. So in the acknowledgements and redirects, there are two options and both are valid to choose from. You have a thank you page, which I like to use on most of my forms, just saying thank you, the form has been submitted. Usually this interaction with the customer and your online presence is done for now. But if you don't think it's done or you want them to keep exploring further options they have with you, you can have a redirect link that can take them to any URL or website of your choice. Now, email notifications is a really important. So with this, you can actually set up an email notification to yourself so that every time a client fills out a form, you get a notification on your email. This is really important. Otherwise, the only way you'd be able to check if a form has been filled out or not is to keep going into Zoho forms and checking the submissions page. This will be one very time consuming, two very easy for you to miss if someone's filled out these forms. You want to have a quick response back to the people. So again, really make sure to fill out email notification. So with the settings out of the way, how do we go up setting tracking referral codes? It's actually quite easy. So in here, I like to create a single line item and we're going to put it up above the top of the form here and we'll create, call this tracking code. Now, what you can do is you can actually create custom links that will have this tracking code section pre-filled out. And here's how you do it. So the first thing we need to do is go to settings. And when we go here, we need to go to field alias and we can choose the tracking code field. And I just like to make it a simple thing. So I call it TC for short. Now, when we hit save, we can now go to sharing. Now, so to create track referrals, most of us would assume we're going to use the track referrals information here. Wrong. We're going to use the pre-fill form fields. So to do this, you can see here, there's this little code that's got the field alias one equals field value and field alias two equals field value. We only need one of them. We don't need two field aliases. So you see we have a permanent URL up the top here. 
And what we can do is we can actually add a little bit of code at the end and it will pre-fill out our tracking code field here. So here's how we add that code to the end of an URL. So to do this, we're going to need to copy the URL, take it into a little notepad, just pasting it here for now. So we can literally at the end of this put question mark. Now the field alias is what we put in the settings before. So in this case, it's TC. Then we can put equals and now we can put the referrer's tracking code. So you may have a system to put in place where you give each referrer their own code. So in this case, we could just put R01. We don't feel like setting up a system where you have referral tracking codes. You could just put in their name. So for instance, my name is awesome. Now, when you have that custom code written, if we actually put this into an URL here, so I'm just copying and pasting it, You'll see the tracking code now comes up with awesome and the client could then fill out all their details in here. And then when they hit submit, that form given to us will have that tracking code on it. But the issue right now is that the client can see the tracking code and they can actually modify it with whatever they want. We don't want that. So here's how we fix it. You can go back into Zoho forms and we can take this tracking code and we can hide the field. If we just repaste that back in, the tracking code is disappeared, but it is still there. It's just hidden. So the referral customer can't modify it. They can't see it. And now you have a form that potential customers can use to order online from you. Getting started with your service has never been easier. This is Orson from Relevate. Thank you for watching. If you like this, don't forget to hit that bell and subscribe icon. And until next time, catch you around.